This week's journey begins in the fantastic city of Dubai, a place visited by millions every year who come for the wonderful weather, the spectacular scenery and of course the shopping. And the majority of travellers do pass through Dubai International Airport, which is where I am today. I'm heading to Birmingham on board the Emirates Airbus A380. Welcome to Blake Edgington Airport. Let's get going. Much like the city of Dubai itself, Terminal 3 at Dubai International is impressive and from the moment you arrive you're reminded that this is the home of Emirates. Terminal 3 opened in 2008 and is one of the world's largest buildings by floor area. This of course means that the check-in area is massive with plenty of desks for economy class passengers. After dropping off my luggage and chatting to the incredibly friendly staff, I made my way to the airport train and headed off to Concourse A to find my aircraft. Concourse A was purpose-built to accommodate the Airbus A380 and allows first and business class passengers to board directly from their respective lounges on the upper levels. For passengers in all classes of travel, there's an impressive range of shopping on offer, with a selection of duty-free stores and well-known brands. You can even choose from a selection of Emirates branded products. If you're feeling peckish before departure, there's plenty of choice available from a number of restaurants and cafes throughout the terminal. Or for a little pre-flight pampering, why not spend some time in the spa? And that was Dubai International. It's an impressive airport. There's nothing I can really say other than that. But it's about that time to head on board the Airbus A380 and have some fun on the way to Birmingham. As I mentioned in my review of the Boeing 777, Emirates has a fleet of more than 250 aircraft and is by far the world's largest operator of the Airbus A380, with over 100 currently flying and more on order. Over 105 million passengers have experienced this massive aircraft with Emirates since 2008, but sadly production of the world's largest passenger aircraft will end in a couple of years, as popularity of jets such as the 787 and A350 increases. Thankfully, Emirates plans to continue utilising the A380 for years to come, and in a moment we'll see what the aircraft is like for passengers. But first, let's see how much it costs to fly on this route. Emirates operate routes to several UK cities, including two daily A380 flights to Birmingham. The best fares can be found on round-trip journeys, whereas a one-way ticket will cost around £560. 
Tickets for the seven hour journey in economy include standard seat selection, in-flight meals and a fairly generous 30 kilogram luggage allowance. After spending some time gazing out of the window, I was ready for the first meal of this journey, which because of the morning departure was breakfast. The food was provided in cute little baskets and included a fruit salad with an apple and raspberry pastry, which was rather sweet, but also quite filling. On certain routes, including this one, the Emirates A380 is configured in a two-class cabin, adding extra economy seats in place of first class, meaning that the aircraft can carry up to 615 passengers. The economy layout on the lower deck is 343, but I chose a seat upstairs which is laid out 242 due to the curvature of the fuselage. Economy upstairs is at the very front of the aircraft, and passengers are provided with reading lights and air vents in the overhead panel, and this aircraft was also fitted with LED mood lighting which changes colour during the flight. As expected, the overhead lockers provide plenty of space, but it was a silver finish to the handles that really caught my eye, and the cabin is full of a number of nice details, such as having your seat number on the armrest, and I also really appreciated the wood effect trim around the windows. Speaking of windows, a benefit to the window seat on the upper deck of the A380, apart from the views, is the additional storage bins along the cabin wall, allowing you to keep your essential in-flight items close by. Now if you watch my channel frequently, you'll know that I tend to fly much shorter flights on smaller aircraft, and the bathroom situation on those aircraft can be pretty tight, but that's not the case here on the Emirates A380. Take a look. Now if this aircraft included first class, this is where you'd find the famous Emirates shower suite, but instead, economy passengers get the benefit of this enormous bathroom, and apart from the space, it features everything you might need to freshen up on a long haul flight. So far, a pretty comfortable flight. Now let's have a look around the seat area that you could expect to find on board the Emirates Airbus A380. You can pre-select your seat during the booking process with Emirates, and the majority are free, but there's a charge for preferred or extra legroom seats as with most airlines. You'll also pay extra to sit in one of the pairs of seats upstairs as I did, but that for me is well worth the cost simply for the novelty of sitting up a deck. Regardless of your chosen seat, the features in economy are the same, and dominating the seat is the entertainment system, which we'll look at in a little more detail soon, but it is worth pointing out that it can be tilted to provide a better viewing angle should you need it. Below the screen there is quite a bit going on, and this seat featured the first of two USB ports on the left, as well as headphone input to enjoy your in-flight entertainment. The ever-present coat hook is placed on the right, and further charging is available via universal power port and a second USB. There is a remote provided for the entertainment system, although I personally didn't see any need to use it myself. Much like on the 777, there's a drinks holder placed right in the centre of the seat, meaning you can leave the table stowed providing more personal space, but if you prefer to use the table, then it has a couple of options. It can be left folded providing just enough room for your drink, or when fully opened up, the table provides plenty of space for the in-flight meal service, and if you need to bring it a little bit closer, there is some adjustment available. Towards the bottom of the seat is where you'll find your pouch containing the all-important A380 safety card, and behind this is a quite generously sized literature pocket, which is where you'll find the in-flight magazines. Of course, most importantly on a long-haul flight is the legroom, which for me was impressive, especially considering that the seat in front of me is reclined. With a couple of hours left to go, the crew passed through the cabin with the second meal service. My wife had the beef and onion ragu, but we both agreed that I chose the better option. To start was a quinoa salad, which to be honest was pretty forgettable, but the chicken korma main was delicious and the meal was rounded off with a wonderful cherry and chocolate mousse with popping candies. It's also worth noting that Emmerich used metal cutlery in economy, which for me is a nice touch. Before landing in Birmingham, let's take a look at the Emirates in-flight entertainment system, ICE, which is well deserving of the numerous awards received. On the A380, the touchscreen is clear and responsive with a huge choice of programming. 
A range of full-length feature films are available, as well as multiple episodes of a wide selection of TV shows. And no matter what your taste in music is, Emmett's probably has you covered. There's also a search function available which I found to be particularly useful. The system features live TV, and the information about the Emirates fleet was particularly interesting to me personally. There's also of course a detailed route map showing the progress of the flight. My favourite feature however had to be the external cameras so that I could admire the wonderful A380 as we made our way across Europe. To enjoy the entertainment fully, Emirates of course provide headphones, but I actually found them to be a little bit uncomfortable and the sound quality wasn't that good, so I was pretty pleased that I'd brought my own with me. And as we've just looked at the entertainment system, now's as good a time as any to remind you that as well as watching my videos by subscribing to this channel, you can track the latest review updates and follow my future flights as they happen by following me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Well, we've just heard from the flight deck, we're now approaching Birmingham. Do stick around to the end of the video for my final thoughts on today's experience, but for now, enjoy the landing. And welcome to Birmingham after that flight with Emirates on the A380. If you're new around here, this is where I'll share with you my overall feelings about today's experience, starting off at Dubai International Airport Terminal 3 and what a terminal this place is. It is very, very big though, so for passengers with reduced mobility or young children, you may want to consider the distances between the gates. It's quite large, but it is also a really enjoyable place to spend a couple of hours. Now, it's a busy day in Dubai International today, but it never felt overly crowded. The concourses have a good amount of size and there was a decent range of seating available as well. And of course, if you enjoy shopping, you really can't go wrong by visiting this terminal. Particularly if, like me, you're an aviation enthusiast, a visit to the Emirates store is well worth it. And then we come to the flight, and I'll start off by saying that in my experience, not just on this channel, but personally as well, the A380 is the best way to travel long haul for economy class passengers. It is a fantastic aircraft, mainly because of the space. Even in economy, just the general size of the plane makes you feel much more comfortable with high ceilings and the width of the cabin, but it's also very quiet, adding to that comfort. And speaking of comfort, my seat today was really, really enjoyable to spend seven hours in. Now you'd have seen during the video I reviewed the seat and the legroom was pretty good at that point but that seat in front of me was reclined then so it was even greater when the passenger in front of me sat upright. I also liked the extra storage that you had on the upper deck of the A380 by the window seats as well. And speaking of the seats and what's around them, the in-flight entertainment system, ICE, is fantastic. It's well known to be the best in the world, and I have to agree in my experience. And it was nicer to have a really high definition and large screen on this particular flight to enjoy the programming, unlike my previous trip with Emirates on the 777. I also enjoyed the food on board today. The breakfast that we provided was not particularly substantial, but it hit the spot. And lunch, that curry, was really, really tasty as well. 
There were a couple of negatives on this flight though, if I am being very picky. One of which is something I mentioned in my previous segments of view on the 777, and that's the fact that I assume company policy dictates the pilots don't speak to the passengers particularly often. Like my 777 video, the pilots only spoke to us once before takeoff and once before landing, and on a seven hour flight, it would have been nice to have an update or just hear from them during the cruise. Again, as a sailor, that may be down to Emirates policy. And secondly, the crew. Now I do keep mentioning it, but my previous Emirates experience, the crew were absolutely phenomenal. They're really engaging, really proactive, and very present in the cabin. Sadly, the crew on this flight were almost the complete opposite. While they were very professional when they were in the cabin, they weren't there very often. They only seemed to pass through the aircraft and see the passengers when they really had to, when they had a service to provide. There weren't very many crew walking just up and down, checking passengers are okay. It wasn't that they were bad by any means, please don't get me wrong, but it just seemed like they were going through the motions a little bit today, and they spent an awful lot of their time in the galley, just behind my seat, having some good conversations, which I could hear because I was close, and also because the A380 is so quiet. But again, they weren't bad overall, and this flight in general was probably the best I've experienced on this channel, and I genuinely cannot wait to fly Emirates again in the future, hopefully on the A380 once more. I do hope you've enjoyed the video today, and if you agree or disagree with anything I've said, please do let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up button, give me a like, and of course, if you haven't already, do subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you never miss a future upload. And as always, take care.